Let's be consistent. Welcome to another episode of the Key to Consistency podcast. I am your host, Rakia Collins, and on today's episode, we are going to be exploring consistency and TV watching. Is there a correlation? What are the impacts of watching TV consistently? All of that good stuff. So if you are an avid TV watcher, um, I want to just say up front, listen, this podcast episode is not to condemn you. It's not to make you feel bad. I think we've all gone through phases in our lives where we've watched a lot more TV than we are comfortable with. Um, But Really, the the episode is really meant to encourage you um, just to let you know, you know, hey, um, you know, there are some other things that we can do outside of just consistently watching TV, um, especially when we're watching things that may not do us any good. So we'll go ahead and dive right in. Um, The first thing I wanted to kind of level set with was, you know, what is the impact of excessive TV consumption? Um, When we think about, you know, what does too much TV actually do to us? um, A couple of things it does is it really increases our sedentary behavior, Um, especially if you work from home and you already sit down a lot anyway. If you don't have the type of job where you are out and about and you are moving um, or if you don't go to the gym you know, just sitting down for a couple of hours every single day to watch TV will have a negative impact on your body physically because you haven't taken the time to work yourself out um, throughout that day. It, of course, increases um, it. Sorry, it decreases um, your your mental well-being and kind of has adverse impacts on that. And I'll dive deeper into that um, as we get into today's episode. But watching too much TV does have an adverse impact on your mental health. Um, And we do want to make sure that, you know, when we think about TV, that we also understand the, the studies that are out there about the correlation of, you know, watching too much TV and how it relates to Um, you know, obesity, how it relates to sleep disturbances, how it relates to decreased cognitive function. Um, So we're going to dive into all of that in today's episode. But the first thing I want to really dive into is kind of the first item I mentioned where the sedentary lifestyle and physical health is really, you know, um, a result of watching too much TV when you sit down on the couch for hours on end and you binge your favorite episode, which I'm sure my hand is raised here as well, guys, especially during COVID, it was a binge session. You would find something on Netflix, you'd find something on Hulu or wherever, you know, your favorite streaming service um, is and would just sit and just watch. But doing that really leads to things like obesity because we're not Whenever we're sitting there, we're mindlessly watching anything on TV, we're consuming anything as well, right? Oftentimes, we're not necessarily focusing on, hey, you know, I'm about to sit down and watch my favorite episode and I'm going to eat some carrots. Like, no, like, let's let's just be real. Let's just put that out there, right? We're not being mindful about what we're consuming while we're watching TV, And that is why several research studies um, show that, you know, health problems such as obesity, um, metabolic disorders, even cardiovascular diseases are really related to, you know, or can, I should say, can stem from and have a relationship with how much TV you actually watch. Um, We also have to understand that when we're sitting down and we're not, of course, now they have certain machines where you can, you know, pedal your feet while you're sitting down, while you're at work. Um, You, if you wanted to, if you have a a treadmill um, and you have like a TV on the treadmill to watch whatever you like to watch, of course, we've, as humans, definitely gotten creative with how we can still do what we want to do, but still kind of, you know, 
um, impacting positively our health as well. So, you know, even if you're, you know, sitting at home, I would encourage you to one, just be mindful of what exactly are you doing when you're watching TV? Are you, first of all, are you even watching TV? Some of us have a tendency to turn the TV on, which again, my hand is raised, turn the TV on. And then you just like have your phone in your hand and you're scrolling on your phone. So you're not even really watching TV. The TV is just there as background noise. The main event is you scrolling on your phone, which is an entirely different podcast that we'll get into. Um, But making sure that, you know, when you're one, when you're watching TV, are you actively watching TV? Um, And then two, with that TV being on, what exactly are you watching on TV? Um, I know I mentioned earlier that there are, you know, unfortunately, you can impair your sleep even by watching TV. Um, When you watch TV, this is specific, of course, to before you go to bed, it can disrupt your sleep patterns because of that blue light that is emitted from your screen. And that isn't just TV, that's on your phone as well. Um, That blue light that is emitted will Um, impact your production of melatonin, which is, of course, that hormone that helps us regulate our sleep. And that disruption, especially before bedtime, can really make it hard for us to fall asleep. And when we do get to sleep, it can reduce the sleep duration and the overall sleep quality. Um, What does this manifest itself as? It looks like sleep deprivation. It looks like um, daytime fatigue. It looks like just impaired cognitive function as you're going throughout your day. It looks like mood disturbances. You may, you know, be up and down throughout that day. The next day, we all know and can attest to how important a good night's sleep is. So just making sure that, you know, before you go to bed, um, you actually monitor, you know, let me get at least you know, an hour, hour and a half, 30 minutes without any type of blue light, without my phone, without, you know, my TV, anything. I can personally tell you that for me, one thing I try to do every single day before I go to bed is outside of, you know, reading the word, I like to stretch. Um, This is probably likely because of how often I work out. I find that Because I work from home and I sit down when I'm done with my day, I enjoy a good stretch. As crazy as that sounds, um, there is nothing like getting in a good stretch before you go to bed. You feel so good. You get into bed different. I would encourage you. There are tons, of course, of videos on YouTube that go through how to stretch. What does a good stretch look like? all that good stuff. So I would encourage you before you, you know, begin to go to bed, what are some other habits that you can begin to develop before you go to bed, whether it's reading a bedtime story to your children or, you know, similar to me, you want to stretch or, you know, go for a walk and just take a hot shower after whatever you want to do that doesn't necessarily involve you watching TV or being on your phone or being exposed to that blue light, I would just encourage you to think about your, your nighttime routine and see if, you know, there's something that you can possibly begin to switch up there just to make sure that you are effectively, um, you know, going to bed in a proper manner. So we don't have to deal with those things like cognitive, um, and impaired cognitive function or mood disturbances. Today's episode is brought to you by the merch shop at thekeytoconsistency.com. I would encourage you to visit our merch shop to see if there's anything that piques your interest. One of the easiest ways to be consistent is to be visually reminded that you are on a mission. You are going to be consistent. So whether you pick up a phone case or you pick up a t-shirt, we have something for you. Again, that is www.thekeytoconsistency.com and I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. Awesome guys. Um, So the next thing that I want to talk to you guys about, of course, it is not just about, um, you know, what are those 
what is like TV is the enemy. TV is bad, right? It's it's not about that. Um, it is truly about TV is around. TV is here. We're not even me. I can tell you, I'm not going to stop watching TV, but I will tell you, I've gotten a lot more mindful in the past two or three years about what I actually watch. And I was not aware um, that, you know, mindful viewing is actually a thing. If you were to Google mindful TV watching, it is actually a thing, right? So, so what is mindful TV watching and how, you know, can you put that into effect in your own life? Um, well, you know, mindful TV watching consists of being fully present and fully aware of our viewing decisions, right, prior to us actually turning on the TV. We turn the TV on with the intention of this is what I'm going to watch. I know a lot of us turn the TV on and we scroll to try to find something to watch. That, I'd say, is a clear indicator that you're just trying to do something that is easy and you don't necessarily have an intention. Whether you turn the TV on to say, I'm going to watch, you know, whatever the game is, a football game, basketball game, or, you know, whatever it is you're going to watch when you turn the TV on and you begin to kind of scroll for me, I'll say when I find that that's what I'm doing, I'm like, okay, you can be doing something else that's way more productive because you don't really have a purpose for turning on this TV if you're just going to scroll. Um, I do, just as a spoiler alert, I do a similar thing for um, my my social media apps, Instagram, um, TikTok, etc. It's like if you find that you're just scrolling and you're not looking for something specific, like you're not looking for, um, you know, an exercise, you're not looking for a recipe, you're not looking for, you know, an outfit, like, you know, inspiration for something and you're just kind of scrolling through to see what's out there, you don't need to be on those apps. But again, that is just what I do. I try to be very intentional um, and purpose driven when it comes down to, you know, those types of things, especially when it comes down to what I'm consuming on a consistent basis, because before I began to adopt this practice, I was what it look like when you consume anything. When you consume anything, you don't begin to realize that you begin to ingest and act out in your own life the things that you are consuming. And that may sound so crazy, but we have to understand and just kind of remember that we are visual creatures and the things that we see, hear, taste, touch, all of those things are going to impact us. They're going to have an impact on how we really see ourselves and how we begin to see the world. And because those things impact the way we relate to the world, we have to be mindful of what we are consuming. So if I were to give a example of this, I used to be a I used to be a willing participant, I should say, in watching a lot of reality TV, a lot of the the drama, a lot of what's going on. And this is not a slam to you if you watch reality TV. I have good friends who still watch reality TV. It's just not something that I consume anymore because I... I began to equate some of that to my relationship. If I see a man cheating, I'm like, huh? Well, I'm now I'm looking at my partner in a weird way because that's what I'm consistently consuming. Um, you know, I'm looking at what they're wearing or what they have on and I'm like, huh, maybe I could spice up my wardrobe to wear something like that. And so um, during that time in my life, I would say, Although I felt like I had a pretty healthy, you know, amount of self-esteem, when you consistently consume something, it is not the content itself, but it is the consistency in which you consume it. If you are exposed to secondhand smoke one time, it's not it's going to negatively impact you, but it's not going to have the same impact on you as if you were consistently exposed to that thing. Right. And so I would just encourage you to be be mindful of what you are consistently consuming and don't just look at it as, well, I can do this. I'm strong. I can do this. I can watch consistently, you know, men cheating on women or, you know, I can watch, you know, a woman hating on her husband and I'm not going to turn violent. I'm not going to think that that's an option because I see that 
we all believe that we won't, you know, but I would just encourage you not to even test the boundaries on something like that. It should just really start with you being mindful about what you are consuming and what you kind of have your eyes set on. So when we think about, you know, again, going back to this, this whole concept of mindful TV watching, um, let's think about, you know, structuring healthy boundaries around what we watch, whether it may not be a TV show. If you turn the TV on and you say, you know what, I just want to listen to some personal development. I want to listen to my favorite podcast, The Key to Consistency, right? Like whatever it is that, you know, you want to listen to, making sure that it is mindful, that it is edifying you. It is helping you, you know, be and become the person that you want to become, making sure that what you watch reduces your stress. It helps you improve your focus and just overall well-being, because as much as you don't want to, you know, maybe admit it when you do watch something like reality TV and you have friends that watch reality TV. Now, when you call your friends, it's like, girl, did you see this? Now we, now we start gossiping about someone else's life, which of course we shouldn't gossip at all. Right. But again, because of what we're consuming, it becomes, it really starts to become something that plays itself out in our own lives as well. And outside of just, you know, what we watch making sure we're cognizant of when we watch TV, allocate specific times throughout the day where you're going to watch TV. And then you may say, you know what, I'm going to take a break from this. I'm not going to, to watch this anymore. Right. Um, I'm going to say 30 minutes. And when I hear that alarm, that's it. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to do something like wash dishes or, you know, spend time with the kids or whatever it is that you want to do. Um, but overall, just making sure that when you're watching TV, you're, you're, of course, mindful of what you're watching. You're mindful of when you're watching it um, and that you make sure that you have things set up in place to put boundaries around, you know, how much TV you consume. And if you decide to say, you know what, I'm just going to go cold turkey and I'm not going to watch TV anymore at all. That's great, right? Think about how much time you spend watching TV and what alternate activities can you put, can you put in that place, right? Things like, um, let's say spending time with your kids, um, things like, you know, other hobbies, whether again, it's going for a walk or if it's reading a book or, you know, joining your local, I don't know, um, your local club that, you know, does golfing or, you know, whatever you want to do to kind of fill that time in a productive manner. I would also encourage you to do that as well. Um, because TV is not TV while it is helpful it can only be as helpful as we allow it to be. And it is something that we as humans should always be in control over. We should not become these mindless, you know, zombies and these mindless TV watchers who, you know, have nothing else going on but watching TV because ultimately our time is our life. And when you sit down and you turn that TV on, you have to really be cognizant of this is how I'm going to be spending my life for the next 10, 30, 20 minutes, two hours, three hours, right? However long you sit there. And if you are okay with exchanging your life for, you know, two hours of whatever content, that is totally fine. But if you say, I'm going to turn, you know, this particular TV show on, and I'm going to sit and watch it for 30 minutes versus doing something else that could benefit you and help you elevate yourself and elevate your family, you just have to begin to think, is that an exchange that I am willing to continue to make? And of course, guys, um, as always, I do want to end today's episode with a verse from the best book in the world. Um, this one comes from Matthew chapter 6 verse 22 through 23 and it says the eye is the lamp of the body if your eyes are healthy your whole body will be full of light but if your eyes are unhealthy your whole body will be full of darkness if then the light within you is darkness how great is that darkness 
And as we know, those are words that were spoken by Jesus. I think considering our topic of TV watching and consistency, that that Bible verse really speaks for itself. So there's really not much for me to unpack there. Remember guys, consistency breeds mastery and transforms the ordinary into the extraordinary. Bye guys. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of The Key to Consistency. Wherever you are listening to this podcast, it would mean everything to me if you could rate it, review it, reach out to me on Instagram. would love your feedback. would love to hear anything you like, anything you don't like. Please feel free to share this episode with someone that you think could benefit from it. And until next time, bye guys.